Thomas the Tank Engine has worked his branch line for many years and knows it very well. You know just where to stop, Thomas, laughed his driver. You could almost manage it without me. Thomas had become conceited. He didn't realize his driver was joking. Later, he boasted to the others. Driver says I don't need him now. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. I'd never go without my driver, said Toby earnestly. I'd be frightened. <laughs> boasted Thomas. I'm not scared. You'd never dare. I would then. You'll see. The next morning, the firelighter came. Thomas drowsed comfortably as the warmth spread through his boiler. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out and then I'll stop and wee. That'll make them jump. Thomas thought he was being clever, but really he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his controls. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wheeze, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors, cried Thomas, and shut his eyes. Now, let's pray over our food. Lord, I'd like to thank you for giving us the delicious breakfast. House rocked, broken glass tinkled, plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master was furious. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine, she scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More plaster fell. This time it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. Workmen propped up the house with strong poles and laid rails through the garden. Then, the Scottish twin engines Donald and Douglas arrived. Dinner fash yourself, Thomas. We'll soon have you back on the rails, they laughed. Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to safety. Bits of fencing, the bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. The twins laughed and left him. Thomas was in disgrace. There was worse to come. You're in a lot of trouble, Thomas. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, a diesel rail car will do your work. A, a, a d diesel, sir? Thomas spluttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Diesels never gallivant off to breakfast in station master's houses. It was a splendid morning on the island of Sodor. James was feeling very pleased with himself. His red paint gleamed in the sunshine as he sped along the line. He reached the junction just as Percy puffed in with some freight cars. James was surprised to see him. What are you doing here, Percy? 
You should be at the station by now. I know, sighed Percy. These cars have been troublesome all morning. That's no excuse, Percy. Nothing should stop us. Sir Topham Hat relies on us to be on time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. And James puffed importantly away. Bossy buffers, muttered Percy. James arrived at the harbor. It was market day. The harbor yard was filled with the sweet smell of fruit from faraway lands. The fruit was delivered in big ships. James watched as strawberries, oranges, melons, and bananas were carefully loaded onto his cars. Then he set off for the station on the main line. On the way, he met Thomas. Really reliable, that's me, panted James. Pity the same can't be said for Percy. Goodbye. What was all that about, gasped Annie and Clarabelle. That was trouble, trouble for James. Just wait and see. Percy was back in the yard and busy shunting. He had the cars in good order and was making up for lost time. But the station master had bad news. What's happened? asked Percy's driver. James's brakes have jammed. We need Percy's help right away. Percy quickly set off to the rescue. James was stuck on the line and looking glum. Percy couldn't help laughing. Got yourself in a bit of a jam, eh, James? A sticky situation? Be quiet. It's not funny having jammed brakes. And not very reliable, either. I'm surprised you let it happen, James. Nothing should stop us engines. That's enough, Percy, said the driver. Can you push these cars? Of course I can. There's no time to lose. James has done too much of that already. James angrily hissed steam as Percy was coupled to the cars. Off we go, said Percy. I'll have to go fast to get there in time. Those big engines are so unreliable. Be careful, Percy, called his driver. But Percy was in a hurry. He didn't see that the switch had failed and that he had been diverted into a siding. Look out, Percy, shouted his driver, and applied the brakes. But it was too late. The driver and fireman had jumped clear, but squashed fruit squirted all over Percy. Sir Topham had arrived. Percy, you are not to blame for the switch failure, but I do not run a jam factory. Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. And Percy squelched sadly away. That night, the shed was silent. James and Percy felt very sorry for themselves. At last, Thomas spoke. You know, he said to no engine in particular, there's more than one way to get jammed. We all learned that today. Still, there was silence. What's more, we also learned that sometimes when engines help each other out of a jam, things can still go wrong. So, said a voice, so, that means we learned a lot today, and therefore... Then came a chorus. We're really useful engines after all.